Right, he's ready? Right, today we're going to look at um, the topic pathogens and disease, okay? So we're going to look at all of the content that you need to know about pathogens and disease in the format of your space learning. So I need you to listen for the first time. And I've got something to do in the gaps that I think you might enjoy. Right, so pathogens, two main types of pathogens, things that cause diseases. Not yet, on the next time, okay? Um, we've got bacteria and we've got, um, they are very microscopic, very, very small. Uh, they're, they're alive, a lot of them are harmless, okay? Not all of them cause disease. They damage cells by producing toxins, right? Toxins damage the cells. They grow very, very quickly, right? They divide every 20 minutes. We can kill them with antibiotics. Some examples of bacterial diseases are food poisoning, tetanus, and sore throats. The other family of pathogens are viruses. They're a bit different because all they are is some genes in a protein coat, so they're not actually alive. They need to be inside a cell to be classed as alive because they uh, use uh, the host cell's mechanisms and then burst them open, and that's how they cause disease. They're not affected by antibiotics. There's no good going to doctors when you've got a virus and asking for antibiotics. Some examples of viral diseases are colds, flu, polio, and chickenpox. Right, how do we defend against pathogens if they are going to attack us? Some of our major general defences include the skin, which is just a continuous barrier. Our breathing organs are coated in mucus, so if any pathogens enter our breathing system, the mucus traps them. Um, if we do cut the skin and any pathogens get into our blood, platelets will form a little seal on the cut, so it'll stop any more getting in. And our major line of defence is our white blood cells. So... White blood cells, they do three main things, okay? You need to remember these three main things they do. They can eat the pathogen. They can literally go around and eat it, just cleaning up the blood. They can make antibodies, and antibodies help to fight the pathogens. And they can also produce antitoxins. So when the bacteria makes a toxin, the white blood cell makes an antitoxin, and that neutralises the toxin so it's not there anymore. So three jobs there engulfing and eating and digesting the pathogen, producing antibodies to fight the disease and to produce antitoxins to neutralise the toxins. Right, what happens when we produce antibodies? Well, here's a white blood cell and first of all, it sees the pathogen. So there's the pathogen. It's going to see it and recognise it as being something dangerous, something foreign. So then what it does is it produces antibodies. So there's the antibodies and look, the antibodies are really specific to the shape of the pathogen. And then what the antibodies do is they clump the pathogens together. So they join onto them and cause them to stick in a clump. And then a different white blood cell can come along and eat the clump and therefore remove all of those pathogens out of the body. Uh, we've utilised this phenomenon of antibodies and how they work and how specific they are to make something called vaccines. So what happens is a small amount of the pathogen is given to you, so you, the pathogen enters your body, not enough to make you ill, though, just enough to make you produce an antibody. So your body makes an antibody, and then the antibodies do their job, and they clump them together, and then another white blood cell comes along and gets rid of them. So the pathogen's removed. But the point is, that white blood cell that made that antibody remains in your blood forever. So you've got the potential to fight the disease for the rest of your life. And the phrase for that is, you are immune. You are made immune. It's artificial immunity. If you become infected with the same pathogen again, uh, that white blood cell will rapidly make millions of antibodies and remove it from your body. Um, there's good things and bad things about vaccines. Uh, some of the good things about it are, obviously, it's going to prevent you from suffering from a serious disease, which could es essentially be life-threatening. And it may reduce the cost of treatments of certain diseases for the, for the NHS. If, you know, if everyone's vaccinated against tuberculosis, you're going to get less people suffering from it, so therefore the hospitals are going to have to treat less people for it. But the problems are, uh, some vaccines are linked to some side effects, or they're believed to be linked to side effects, and the MMR vaccine is an example of that being linked to autism. So some people then don't get, don't get the vaccination. And also the pathogen can become resistant to the vaccine, so it doesn't work anymore. And a good example of that is the flu. You have to renew your flu vaccine every year because the pathogen mutates and changes. Um, antibi antibiotics are good for treating um, 
infections with bacteria, but there's two problems with overusing antibiotics. The first one is the bacteria can become resistant to them and, and they cannot work anymore. And you can end up with superbugs that are resistant to many antibiotics and therefore are virtually impossible to treat. And the one that's commonly in the news is MRSA. Another problem with antibiotics is they don't kill viruses, right? They only kill bacteria. Here's how antibiotic resistance comes about. This is quite tricky. Um, what happens is bacteria can change, and so can viruses change very quickly. That's called a mutation. And it's when the genes change for no reason. It's just random. So what you've got is, if you have a bacteria, and normally you can kill it with an antibiotic, like penicillin, um, most of the uh, bacteria will die with antibiotic around it, and it'll kill them and get rid of them. But there may be some that are resistant, just because of their natural variation in the genes. So the first stage there is variation. Some bacteria naturally might be resistant over others, and it'll be small numbers. And what you have is, you'll have a competition, because if the antibiotic's present, all of those that are not resistant to it are going to die and be wiped out in your body or in a hospital or whatever. But the ones that are resistant, even if it's just one, will live. And even if you've got one that has a useful mutation to survive, it'll then reproduce. And when it reproduces, it passes on its genes, right? It's the genes that make it resistant. So you end up with bacteria, or many bacteria, that are resistant to the antibiotic. And that's how MRSA developed. Right, we can use painkillers to treat the symptoms of diseases, but you must remember that painkillers don't kill any pathogens. They just reduce the symptoms of the disease and make it more bearable. And often viral infections will be treated with painkillers because we don't have antibiotics. Getting on to the last little, bit of se little section here, we need to know about this guy, Ignaz Semmelweis. Right? He was a Hungarian doctor in the 1800s. And what he realised was that in hospitals, um, a, a lot of uh, babies were being delivered by doctors and they were dying. And they weren't dying when midwives delivered them. And he thought, what's happening here? And he found that a lot of the doctors were coming straight from the morgues. And so he got them to wash their hands in between the morgue and the delivery suite and he found that the death rate fell from 12 to 1%. So he was really at the brink of discovering that they were carrying pathogens on the hands. And no one knew that then because there was no microscopes. Here's some data here. I'm going to ask you what this data means next time. If we look at the... We've got some years there and the amount of hand wash solution used in a hospital. So it's going up. MRSA infections per 100 patients goes down. So the link or the conclusion is... The more hand wash you use, the more you wash your hands, the more you sterilise, the less deaths you'll get because you're killing the air pathogens with chemicals. Yeah, when you wash your hand in like alcohol gel, it's killing it with, killing it with uh, the chemical, so it can't be passed on. Yeah.